So we have hail for me on the podcast. <laughs> it's uh, it's Jonathan Goodman Hales from Toronto, Canada. His father of two, and is a one do egg state kind of statement kind of guy. Oh, shit, I screwed that up. <laughs> That's all right. Just the fact that today you we're talking do-rag. about how to start with a new client. Ooh. And it's a lot Yay. of customer experience stuff. It's a lot of client onboarding stuff. And I'm really excited to go over it. It's kind of um, defined two ways. One is you got to meet clients emotionally where they're at and, and take them on a bit of a journey, especially when they start. It's, it's, I mean, the start of your coaching is the most important part of your coaching. And what a lot of coaches do, uh, I'll tell you a story. What did I call him? Um, here, I know what his actual name is, and I don't want to screw it up because I'm talking shit about him. So uh, Charlie <laughs> is what I call him. Uh, <laughs> so I tell the story of Charlie and how, like Charlie signed me up as his client. And then I basically had to chase after him to get the program and didn't hear from him for like seven days. Meanwhile, he was working on my program. He was doing what he should have done, but I'm sitting there as a new client and nobody's spoken to me for seven days. Uh, and that's obviously a bad experience. So we're going to talk about that, um, meeting them emotionally where they're at. And then the second kind of piece of it is our client confidence comes from the rigidity in your process. We've mentioned that before, but it really, it really comes to play here. Client confidence comes from the rigidity in your process. You're the Uh expert. Experts have a process. The more rigid your process, the more your clients will trust you. Before we get into all of that, though, I haven't told you this yet, Amber and Ren. I sent out an email to somebody today to see if they were interested in sponsoring the podcast. Now, I'm not actively looking for sponsors. I don't really care if somebody sponsored the podcast. There's basically two companies that I would want to sponsor this podcast. And, and the reason is there's like two companies that stuff that I actually actively use and really like mm-hmm. one of them's Castio and they don't retain my calls. And so <laughs> I messaged the other one to see if they would do it. Uh, and I told them that I'm friends with the people who own it, obviously, but I told them that and I said, you know, you and, and one other company. Yeah. It's, it's the, it's the, yeah. I'm not going to say their name unless you pay me. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Unbelly, you know, is the, is the name it's the only clothing that I wear. And so, yeah, I messaged them. Uh, and, uh, and I just said, Hey, do you want to sponsor the podcast? Possibly my newsletter. Um, you know, I only, I don't really need sponsors, but I kind of just I'm happy to share word of you guys more than I already do. Uh, if you want to pay me bitches. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, it's very rag behavior, John. <laughs> but, uh, we might be, might be talking about some Marina wool clothing. <laughs> When I say, one, I mean, whichever one of you two wants to kind of take this, when I say like onboarding, how to start with a new client, let's lead off with this. What, what's the first thing that kind of comes to mind? That's a lot of fun. Like that's my favorite part, you know, beyond them, like actually succeeding at their goal. But like, that's the most fun for me, right? Like beyond that right because that's that should be the number one thing but like that's the moment where they are the (laughs) most excited and nervous and like full of energy and potential and to be able Mm. to kind of take that and run with it and set them on a good path um so i mean for me that's just so much fun because and i'm sure ren does the same thing like that's where you have a lot of room for like creativity and having fun in the process um so for me, that's I, one of my yeah. Favorites. This is like this is your I bread agree. and butter, Amber. So yes, I'm looking forward to you making this better. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I already definitely. added. I already added a line based off of what you said. I I just added. They're full of energy and potential. Like right in the book. Like that line got added to the book <laughs> as you were talking. You might have heard my keyboard. Uh, when anything like what's the first thing that comes to mind when you when you hear the line how to start with a new client? I, I immediately think like first date slash honeymoon. Right. It's 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 it sets the precedent for whatever the relationship is going to be. You know, relationships are like a bungee cord. Right. Uh, they never go higher than you jump off than the jump off point. Right. People get in and think they always oh, going to get better and better. And, and it may. But generally speaking, the height to which you jump the bungee is the greatest height to which the bungee is going to go. Right. It's not going to it's going to bounce higher than what it is. So I got to be pretty doggone good at that. That first step and i and i'm and i've just i've just poured some some cash some canadian loonies into my onboarding so i'm i'm eager as well to talk after amber talks though uh because she's gonna say better stuff and that will make my stuff seem better better. yeah it'll make my stuff seem better if they've already heard something good i do want to thank you though and because i just added yet another line to the book Uh, (laughs) the first the first 
a paragraph now of this section uh, goes, and, and, and let me read it for you, dear listener. A new <laughs> client just signed up. Period. They're full of energy and potential. Period. Nice. It's both the first date and the honeymoon. Well, period. there you go. There you new go. paragraph. What next? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I'm so sure we'll, we'll discover. So we need a little, like, footnote. So every time it's a line from Ren, it has, like, a little one- <laughs> No, and then when it's from me too. Well, the last—I mean, you guys know this—but uh, the last episode was the seesaw of empathy, which I think was a phenomenal episode, largely because I spoke a lot less than I usually do, and Ren spoke a lot more. <laughs> and that was a section that I had written in the book and really, really struggled with. And I decided to bring the topic to the podcast so I could interview you and and learn more about it. And then uh, the day after we recorded the podcast, Amber sent me the recording, um, and I sat back down and rewrote it, and I love what came out of it. Uh, I'm a just, winner. It, like I could show you guys the first draft of that section, and you'd be like, "That's terrible." <laughs> <laughs> this poop. Did you write poop, John? It was just not. You know what? It was missing. It was missing <laughs> the depth. It was missing the stories that you gave. It was missing little little quotes um, that really make it make it jump out. Like like I'll never forget that I'm not a native. But that I'm not right. native, but my goal is to to feel fluent. It's, so it's you cannot immerse yourself in another language and culture authentically and not see your empathy level for that group of people rise. So you, you, what you're saying is it needed a little energy, huh? Am I right, huh? <laughs> you guys get it, you listeners, huh? So it's super important to get in front of buyers or more significant in the coaching. I don't like you gotta anticipate lack of how they're gonna feel, right? And and when you're meeting people where they're at, it's <laughs> it's meeting people emotionally where they're at right. more than anything else. And so when somebody starts coaching after they've signed up, they're generally pretty nervous and pretty anxious. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. It's like two virgins on a honeymoon. Is this a theme for us today? That's the one that's <laughs> <laughs> I like that he didn't like it, but then thought about it. Was like, no, actually, that was pretty good. Yeah, let me try well, to stop. You can edit the stuff out later, but that better, to have, to, <laughs> better yeah. to have it. Better to have it and not yeah. need it than need it and not yeah. have it. Little <laughs> down, you because you can't build up later, but you can always chop down. That makes sense. I would just, I love the three listeners of this podcast when they buy the book. <laughs> and they just get to the section, and they're just going to remember back to that one episode they listened to in whatever, oh in April or whatever this episode's going live, and they'll be like, oh, that line was stupid, and it's stupider in this book. Right. It's wonderful. <laughs> it reads dumber than it sounded. So what it's going to feel like to your client when they start your coaching is they're going to feel like they're a virgin on their honeymoon. <laughs> And they're going to look at their, at their spouse, at their partner, who's also a virgin on that same honeymoon, and they're going to say, where do I stick it? Oh, my God. <laughs> what, okay, I have Madonna stuck in my head now. Thanks. <laughs> so, okay. Oh so, God. I mean, that's funny. I don't care who you are. That's funny. That's funny, too. Should uh, adjust my hat. That does need adjusting. So, a new oh. client needs to know two things, right? Right away. They got to know these two things when they start. And, and the two things are, what do I do now? And who do I contact? And how do I contact them if I need anything? Mm. You got to anticipate a letdown period after your sale. Mm. Because your sale is generally where you bring up a lot of excitement, bring up a lot of tension. And then they buy, and now they have to go to work. It's super exciting to talk about change, to dream about change. It's really hard to actually do it. And once the sale is over, the work starts. And so they're probably pretty nervous, but at the same time, there might actually be some like annoying administrative stuff, like getting them set up in the software or whatever beforehand as well. And so the first steps that you take with a client are super, super, super important. I do think that the details of this really matter. I think it's worth taking the time to really analyze all of the touch points, what a person might be feeling, and we'll go over like a process for you. 
I think it's really worth it because what will happen is that if you can nail the beginning of your training, A, that's the best time to get new referrals and to have your client be super excited and talk to other people about what you're doing. It's not actually after you've gotten them results. It's when you're really excited and when it's starting is when they talk about it the most. And then the second is, of course, they'll stick around longer. And, and when they stick around longer, you keep clients longer. And it's a good thing. And so I want to tell a story about a coach who doesn't do a good job. This is Charlie. But anything to add to that idiocy for the most part? But I feel like there was some good stuff in there, Amber. No, nah, you just want to keep going? Yeah. The two virgins. The two virgins on a honeymoon. Just, just. Well, you, you know, you started saying the two things, and then in my head, I'm still stuck on the two virgins on a honeymoon, and so I was applying those two things to the virgins on the honeymoon, and like, who do I talk to if things aren't going right? Same. And I was just, <laughs> my Same. brain's a little frazzled, so we just need to move forward. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what you're going for. That one. That's cool. Yeah. Ren got it. That's all that matters. Yeah, I don't understand exactly what you're saying. <laughs> Like, you know, your rabbi, the your minister, maybe they can help. <laughs> I need spiritual guidance. Yeah, any, any holes in your circle, male or female, <laughs> otherwise? Good consult. Sorry. So I hire, I hire a lot of my own coaches. I think that all coaches should hire coaches. And I think that uh, our fitness coaches particularly should hire a lot mm -hmm. of our fitness coaches. And there's a lot of reasons why I do it. One is just personal fascination i'm just i i love movement i love different ways to move i love different types of programming i love different workout styles and it's just fun to be able to experience a lot of the other ones it's just like kind of my hobby <laughs> but the other part is it's the best way to learn i've learned more about coaching and about programming from hiring other coaches than anything else any book any course any anything and that's because I mean, you experience it. You're like, it's one thing to read about something in a book. It's another thing to actually feel how it feels when you're doing it, especially something you're not good at. And so I'm often surprised, number one, at how rarely fitness coaches hire their own fitness coaches. Uh, but I'm also surprised when I do hire a fitness coach at how badly the coach that I hire manages the client experience, particularly early on. And so... I hired, um, I mean, I'm not going to say his actual name, but I hired, I hired Charlie as my coach. And he's in his 50s. He's built this wonderful reputation. He's, he's really world-class at what he's been doing. He's been doing it for 25 years. He's a lifer. He's, he's, he's one of the best out there. And I've, I've known Charlie for about a decade. And he's always asked me, he's asked me often, not always asked me, he's asked me often for business development advice. And like his business is fine. He makes a living. And like he's going to make a living for a while. But he's frustrated because with his knowledge, with his reputation, he should be doing better than just okay. Like, like this guy's world-class. He should be getting world-class results with his business. And so I, had, I helped him as much as I could. And then, I mean, there's only so much that I can tell somebody. I don't know whether he was doing it or not doing it. Um, but he just couldn't seem to like break through. Anyway, so he sent me a link to pay. I paid. Then I got a receipt. And the receipt was just the automated receipt from PayPal because I paid him through PayPal. <laughs> and almost a full day later, he sent me an email saying that he was going to send me an intake form to fill out. Another full day passed, and I got the intake form in a message. It was like, hey, can you please fill this out so you know we can get started on working together? And so I got the intake form two days after paying. And I submitted it like pretty much right after, you know, within an hour or two. Because I don't know if because Amber does all my work for me and I don't have much to do myself. And then after three more days, I emailed him and I asked him if he received it because I didn't get any even confirmation that he received it. He said yes. <laughs> and that his process was that he sends his program seven days after new clients join. He said it nicely, like he wasn't upset or anything like that. He was just like, yeah, just, you know, so, you know, like it takes me about seven days to get your program ready. Like I put a lot into it and, and he does. Um, after seven days, I didn't hear anything because, of course, seven days was the weekend. And I didn't know whether to message him again or whether I'd be bothering. Him. And at this point, it was sort of more awkward, like as the client, I didn't know 
what I should do or not do. And I don't want to bother him. And so I waited. And then a few days later, which was the week, I got an email and the email wasn't from him. The email was inviting me to download his client app. It was a huge software that he uses. And so it was to download his client app. And I didn't even know whether it was from him or not. It was just like, can you download this app from this company? Right? And so I emailed him to ask, and he said to follow the instructions, and that he's loaded my program in. Uh, and then he invited me to email or call him with any questions that I had. And so you know, I followed the instructions and the super stupid, cumbersome instructions to download the app of this guy's software. And, uh, and, and I downloaded the app, and you know, lo and behold, my program was in there. But his programming style was different from anything I've seen before. So I had some questions, but when do I call him? Am I going to bother him? His process was so loose and he was doing it because he thought that it was better for me, probably. I don't know. I'm putting words in his mouth, but it felt awkward, you know, in, in what it seemed like in his mind is that he was giving me a lot of options. In my mind, I was just confused. Like, like, do I call him? Do I message him? Do I text him? He said I can do all these things. He didn't tell me when or or what he prefers. And so do I just like click call on my phone? Do I send him am I gonna bother him? And all of these are like ridiculous minor kind of thoughts. But the worst thing that a new client can be when they first sign up with you is confused. And so eventually I texted him questions, he responded, and I completed his program. It was um was it 12 weeks? It was eight or 12 weeks. But I didn't renew. And I didn't even know whether it was time for me to renew. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I mean, to be fair to him, I think this is because he was like trying to do me a solid, like as his buddy. Mm -hmm. But the coaching kind of just fizzled out and neither of us followed up. And the entire thing was just super awkward. And it's all because of how it started. And I do accept some of the blame for not following up, but also like I was the client in the situation. It's the coach's job to lead the process. I guess what I'm saying is that you can't get a client results right away. Emotionally, you know that they're going to be coming down off of a high into what I call the what the heck did I just agree to period. And you got to get in front of that. You're not going to be able to get them results. You probably won't even have time. Like, like you're not going to be able to get them a program right away. It's going to take some time. There's got to be an intake process. You've got to get information from them. And then you've got to go and probably build a program or decide which of your programs is right for them or whatever it is. So there's going to be some time. There's going to be a gap. So you've got to meet them emotionally. Um, so I want to talk about how I designed our client flow. And then we can give some details of, of all of the kind of different pieces of it. But I don't know, like that experience that I had with Charlie, like, is that common? Do you guys like, yeah, that's is that common. weird? No, we see it. I mean, we working with students, right, Ren, like we, before we, we get to help them figure this kind of stuff out. I mean, that's the default, right? Like, I think they're so good at programming. They forget that they have to program their business as well. Right, they take right. all of that smart, the smarts that they have, and they forget to share the wealth in the rest of their business. Um, so yeah, that is super common. I mean, in every business I, I, I've participated in, from you know getting house cleaning services to massage to everything, like that's super common. But definitely with our students like, as well, like the shower buddy, the bathroom renovation buddy. Yeah, didn't give you a lot of great upfront. Yeah, here's what's gonna happen. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. is that so you think it's you think it's a largely the result of basically the person is just too close to their own thing and they obsess so much with their own thing that they forget that there's like not that they forget, but they don't quite think about how a human on the other end is gonna receive it. Well, it seems obvious I, to us, right? Like that's right. the thing. It's like, well, of course this is gonna happen. Like every step because we're in it. It looks I'm obvious to us. Uh, what's what's saying if your hammer everything looks like a nail, mm -hmm. right? This this applies to trainers because everything looks like fitnessy fitness fitness fitnessing. Yep. I need to do the fitness thing and the fitness got to be right and they got the right have do I have the right reps sets 
What about the load? Is the progressive overload right? Like all the things that a client truly has no clue is on point or not. Because then your client doesn't know shit about fitness more than likely, yeah. but they know what a business transaction is like when it's appropriate. And I think that because of the ongoing levels of imposter syndrome, new coaches in particular that are new to having their own business, first and foremost, want to prove what a good coach they are and not prove what a good business person they are, right? So you get lost in the sauce of, of all the programming stuff. And you don't even, and you get so distracted by that. I think that a lot of the students that we talk to, John, they just don't even notice what they aren't doing in the human to human yeah. aspect. And they're, they're sort of like, Oh, I never really thought about that. You know? Yeah. You're, you're not, you're in the concierge, you're in the uh, customer service business. What yeah. you happen to be servicing is fitness, but you are not in the fitness business. Mm -hmm. So in the absence of customer service, the fitness shit, them shits don't matter, bro. Uh, you know what I mean? Like you, you got to do the, you got to learn how to be a customer service person first. Well, the fitness, uh, the, yeah, the fitness doesn't matter if you don't, if if, if there's no customers to serve. Uh, I mean, right. it sounds obvious, but it's when you think about it in that sense, you realize where perhaps your priorities in terms of where you spend your time might be misaligned. I mean, it's the same conversation that we have with marketing and sales, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Where if you don't actually sell to a client. You can't actually serve a client ever. So it's completely fucking irrelevant how many textbooks you read. <laughs> if nobody can ever benefit from them because you can't get a client because all you're doing is posting about some nuanced version of a squat that you read on the internet. Meanwhile, your client hasn't moved. You know, in, it hasn't ever been in a gym before. They don't need your, they don't need to know about the Q angle in <laughs> their hips. Facts. If they're a runner because. All they're trying to do is just make it so they can get off a toilet when they're older. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, so what are you focusing on? May I, may I give a quick anecdote about that, John? I'll, I'll be brief. I'll, wait, I'll be brief. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. Anecdotes one. <laughs> this about this specific subject. Not the uh, toilet thing. No, not the toilet thing. Good, go on. No. Uh, I, know you, I know you need to sip up your pop. So I figured I'd say something. I, I had a this discussion with a with a client client with a student yesterday. Uh, a student who for wanted what? me let's promote. Let's oh, promote a student for the, the online trainer. The the online trainer academy and all yeah, students so of can PCBC. You I, don't, yeah, I never you... know, John. Amber knows. I, like I don't know online trainer dot com. I don't know. Where is, is that? Where it is? OTA dot <laughs> PCBC dot com slash OTA. That's, That's exactly what I was about to say. It's, it's alphabet soup. Stop interrupting me, Amber. Go to, you, know what's, you know what's better? OnlineTrainer.com slash academy. Okay. okay. All right. I that paid $63 goddamn <laughs> thousand dollars for that domain. It's still we active. Need use it. We never use we it. We all need to use it. I butchered it through three different versions of this podcast, by the way. $63,000 uh, on that. What's wrong that? with you? Money well, money well spent, John. It's a good, it's a good round number. Um, mm, the good. anecdote. I had a I had a coach yesterday that was a student in the online trainer academy who wanted me to sort of pour over his social media. He said, I want okay. you to check out, I want to post. The very first post, uh, I shit you not, the very first post was uh, a graph with data points. The dots weren't even connected, right? It wasn't even the, the line graph that you can, and it was of someone's weight loss along okay. the uh, along the y-axis, it had the weights. Along the x axis, it had the dates. Uh, it had a it had um, a legend on the right. And I say, "Whoa, dude, who are you? Who are you selling to?" He's like, "I want to sell to you know." He was martial arts. I want to sell to martial artists who do a particular type of martial art with the some uh, a Asian sword, kendo, something like that. I was like, "Okay, cool. Yeah, they don't want to see this graph, bro. Like, it, like I see what you're trying. Well, I just want to show that I was able to see weight loss. I was like." Take a pen, right, and a blank white sheet of paper. Draw a graph going down and say, this is what happened to my client. Put your picture <laughs> in the corner, right? Knock it out of the park. People will say, oh, look at that drastic weight loss. Oh, the guy in the corner probably did that. When you got data points that aren't even connected, 
on a grid. You got a grid. This screen right, right, right. nerd. Like people, I understand. Did you, research. Did you say that to him? Did you yes. Say, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a stuff who said, no, no. <laughs> and then I pulled his shorts up virtually into a wedge. Um, yeah. But I said, dude, I've been trained to read research. I don't like it, but I, I understand it. This is research that you posted. Nobody's going to get it. Um, and that is really aligned with what we were just talking about, how you communicate the customer service aspect. There's nobody that needs customer service from a coach that right. needs to be instructed through a data point grid graph. Mm. It ain't working. Um, well, that's like, uh, that's, that's, like, that's like the dude who says, I train new moms who, are, who, who have never exercised before to help them lose weight and gain more confidence. And meanwhile, it's like, this 26 year old power lifter in his entire Instagram is him lifting logs above his head. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, he's like, I don't know how, I don't know what to do with my face. First right. off. But second off, um, I'm just going to adjust my hat, even though it doesn't need to be adjusted. And third off, I, I'm confused as to how you don't see the disconnect here. <laughs> and this is why you don't do our social media audits. Right. 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 <laughs> Are you, have you looked at your page recently? Um, <laughs> you know, be, very nice guy. He 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 made some changes, et cetera. But but this is common, right? Because we want to prove our personal trainerness to the world, right? Instead of just communicating with the person who's right. actually probably going to need you and buy buy your wares, right? Yeah, it's important I, to have people buy your wares. Uh, yeah. Okay. I so like my wares bought. <laughs> <laughs> That take, sounds dirty. Take my coin cup out and throw it in my mouth. So going back to one of the first things that I said um, in this podcast that is rife with idiocy today uh, <laughs> in all the best ways, worst ways, a client needs to know two things, I think, in a, in a really good onboarding process. The first is, what do I do now? And the second is, who do I contact and how do I contact them if I need anything? I actually think the second is a really, really important point because there, there might be something, like you probably can't give them all of the information that they're going to need to know. And even if you do, they might not understand it or pay attention to it or forget about it or whatever. Like there's probably a lot of things that they might need to know or something they didn't think about. And, and that's a part that you can't control. But what you can control is that they know exactly how to get the information and that they're welcome to get the information yes. when they need to get it. So I actually think the second point is really, really valuable. So here's how I designed our new client flow. And just for context, this does utilize a salesperson in a video chat. But what, what we'll try to do, and as you listen, try to think about the philosophy and, and the fundamentals of it. Like, you, if your business is you, yourself, and I, or you're doing this in person and not via video chat, like the principles are the same. It just the handoff might be a little bit different, or there might not be a handoff. Like in our case, there's a handoff. In your case, the handoff might be you handing it to yourself and give yourself a high five, right? Uh, so <laughs> at least normal. <laughs> at least in this way, I give myself high fives all the time because I generally don't talk to people other than you two. Uh, over the course of the week. I had a conversation with somebody today, actually in real life. Um, that was fun. All right. His name's Pascal. Yeah, he, he owns three gyms in Austria. He's got 27 trainers. And he um, he's a big educator in, in German. And we were at a little circus class for kids in a small town like the next town over in the middle of nowhere, Mexico. And he's like, hey, man, I've read all your books. I was like, oh, hi. Cool. Awesome. And so we, yeah, we went to coffee today and it was, it was fun to actually sit down with an industry colleague doing great work and like have a real, uh, we probably talked for like two hours just about awesome. everything and nothing, which was, which was really cool. And, um, and so anyway, as your business grows, at least this way, like this is like a scaled version, at least this way you'll know how to do it in a scaled version and you can scale it back, but understand the principles are the same. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things that I said is rigidity in your process. Good processes are rigid. When you have a rigid process, you'll be able to scale that process when the time's right. 
I'm going to talk about scaling a lot in the coming weeks as I write those sections of the book because we're, we're in the client care section for another week or two and then we'll get more into scaling. But for now, here's how the client handoff, I think, should go. So the client buys, right? The salesperson, which might be you, which might be somebody else, should first just congratulate and reassure them and then transition from the sale to the start of coaching. If you haven't listened to the five-step sales process yet, I don't remember what episode that is. Ambo, do you mind grabbing that episode number um, while I'm talking? Did she freeze? I think we lost Ambo. I don't know if she yeah. froze or she was I'm oh, here. I thought she was, I thought she was stoic. I was like, yeah, wow, this is here. amazing. She really um, locked in. It's uh, episode Amber, 28. Episode 28. So if you haven't listened to episode 28, um, we talk a lot about, I talk a lot about the transitions in a sales meeting and the transitionary statements. And one of the important things about objection closing and transitionary statements is this magical little word called so, because what so does is it leaves behind what you've said and it moves forward the conversation. And so once somebody buys, that magical little word shows up again. So here's basically what we say. It's obviously a little bit different each time, but great. So here's what's going to happen right now. <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen, get you all set up in our software so that you know exactly where to find everything, including a quick vision mapping assignment to do today. Then once I hang up, I'll send you a text introducing you via success coach and John and Jason, the two owners of, of program. While they're still on the call, so they haven't hung up the phone yet, what the salesperson does we call them a student advisor, but what the salesperson does is they actually share their screen and create an account for that person. This is still in the sales call. Create an account for that person and send that person their password to reset that and wait for the person to receive it and log into the software. And the reason for this is getting set up on new software sucks. It's just not fun. Now, if you get set up on Quick Coach, it's super easy because we removed a lot of this friction. But if you don't use Quick Coach, if you use software that's a lot more cumbersome, it sucks. Anyway, it, even if it seems simple, it just it just bogs people down. It's it's a step in the process that bogs people down and can hurt a lot of the initial momentum. So, I think you should just get it out of the way in that first sales meeting. When you're done, just be like, "All right, let me give you a tour around," and that way. You show them exactly where to find things and where to find their first task or assignment that's waiting for them. And so in our case, it's a 90-day vision mapping assignment. Very quick assignment to do. But once logged in, what happens is the advisor gives them a quick tour of the learning portal, shows the client where to find their first task that's waiting for them to – gets them to download it, waits for them to download it. And then what they do is they show the new client the link. In the, in the software that links them to our online community and they ask them while they're on the phone to request access to it. Once it's confirmed that the new client's set up in the software and they've requested access to the community, that's when they hang up the phone. Ideally now right away, unless the salesperson has like calls back to back, the new client gets an introductory text message, which is a four way message. The message includes just a quick welcome includes quick details about the client and another reassurance that the client's in the right place. So here's an actual handoff message that was sent. Actually, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's kind of long because these are pretty long, but they're pretty detailed. But I'm going to change the name. Yo, John, Jason, and Krista. So Jason and I, of course, run a mentorship. Krista's one of our success coaches. And so the salesperson decides, in our case, for the mentorship, which success coach is the right match for this person. So yo, John, Jason, and Krista, please... Join me in welcoming so-and-so to the online training mentorship. She's a fit pro. She's a person out of this place. She's looking for help scaling her online business. She's a former manager of multiple Equinox locations in New York City. And then she went private, had an assistant coach before burning out from workaholism. It led her back to her roots in Detroit, where she's hit reset and is connecting with a vision that will better serve her and her clients. Add some real details there. And then right at the end of it, she's looking for growth right now. And I believe she's come to the right place. We'll let you guys take it from here. What that message does is a whole bunch of things. Number one, it shows that she was listened to. Like there's a lot of details in there. It's like somebody listened to me and they were obviously writing it down and remembered it. 
which is really important. Then what happens yes. is, of course, we all respond. So Jason will send a welcome message. Wherever I am, I'll shoot a quick video. It's like 10, 15 seconds. I'll shoot a quick video. Hey, what's going on? So great to have you. Yes, I try to make note of, of something that we have in common or, or, or whatever there is, right? If not, just like a really nice welcome to them. Uh, and then here's, here's an example of where the details matter so much. I always want to say somebody's name. It sounds so simple and obvious, but I always want to say somebody's name. But some people have names that are uncommon, different to pronounce, and I definitely don't want to say their name wrong. So our sales team is trained such that before they send this text message, if the person has a name that, I'm, that that pronunciation might not be obvious, they send me an audio note of how to pronounce the name. That's just an example of like, what's the 10% farther that you can go mm -hmm. where you're like, All right, what are the details here? You want to say the person's first name. I might not know the name, but I want to have a video for them. Okay, well, send me an audio note because you've already figured that out. Right, again, process, 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 process. Um, and then the final person, of course, in this introductory text is uh, the success coach that the salesperson matched them. In this case, it was Krista. So then um, that person responds, and they usually respond with the exact same message, which is, welcome to the team, excited to have you on board. I'm going to send you a private text so we can connect without blowing up these people's phones. And then what they do is they text that person separately. The salesperson passes on all of the notes to the success coach, like they just pass it along. Um, and the salesperson keeps the notes, of course, but transitions um, all of the information that they've gathered about the person. And then uh, the success coach makes sure that within 24 hours, come hell or high water, they get on the phone for just a 15 minute call with the new client, say hello, answer questions, share the process, get, gather some initial data, and, um, and, and make sure that they know what they're doing with that quick vision mapping assignment. Any reactions to all of that before kind of get into there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's a little bit more fun stuff I want to get into, but any reactions to all that? Amber, you're the, you're the customer experience queen. What I like is that, like a five-year-old can navigate that, right? Like that's always kind of like a barometer that, that I use is could a five-year-old navigate this process, right? Would they know what to do next? And I think in that process that they would, right? They would be able to follow along in this and not be confused. Is your five-year-old the client or the, or the coach? Sorry. The, the, the client, right? Yeah. So if, if I, like, if I was going to have a typical five-year-old, right? Like here's, here's the thing. Do you know what to do next? Do you know what to do next? Right? Like that's kind of like, if you can't reach that barometer, you might need to, to play with it a little bit. And I think that process meets that criteria in my mind because it, it guides them so easily that there is no room for confusion um, and it just sets the expectation of what they can look forward to moving forward and it just kind of takes that already excitedness that they have at the beginning and just takes that to the next level because they're so well taken care of and then the and then the other part that i didn't even make special note of is this person now a is knows exactly who their success coach is who is their shofa along the journey like the way that we've designed our system is there are individual skills coaches for all of the different things that they'll do, but they don't need to worry about what skill they're working on or what coach they need to speak to. They have one point in contact to their success coach. That's their Sherpa. That's who they talk to. That's who gets to know them really well. And their success coach says, okay, here's the call that I think you should attend this week. Or, hey, I'm going to match you with this person for a one-on-one. -on -one. Or here's your homework assignment right this week. And um, – and so they are introduced to that person from day one, and they know that's their point of contact, but they also have the phone numbers of the two owners of the company. And I think maybe two people have messaged me separately in like the two years we've been doing this. I mean, people, they're welcome to use it if they need to use it, but people will respect it. <laughs> I mean, it's not mm -hmm. that they won't. Um, and... I can't, it's one of those things that I don't think that you could really measure. 
maybe you could. I wouldn't know how to measure it. But I got to think that that makes a really big difference to somebody joining a program, that they have the personal phone number of the owner of the company, that they know is there in case something goes wrong. We had a, so when Allison and I bought our house, we closed on the house, I think it was in October, but we weren't coming back into the country until February. But we wanted to buy a bunch of stuff for the house so that when we come back, it was there. And so what we did is we got a storage locker. We basically shopped uh, Black Friday for like everything. Um, and so we got it sent to a storage locker. So we shopped and then we got everything shipped to the storage locker and the storage locker accepted it while we were out of the country we were in Mexico. And there were some problems. And one of the, the, there was an email that came in. It was from uh, something called the Bay, which you guys wouldn't know as Americans, but it's like a big department store in Canada. And after we bought, there was an email that came in. And it was one of those emails where I wasn't quite sure whether it was real, but it was like a VP. It was like somebody super high up at the company. It was just like, hey, thank you so much for making it. was an automated thing. Hey, thank you so much for making your purchase. Look, if anything goes wrong, or you never ever need anything. This is my personal phone number and this is my email. And yes, this is real. And something went wrong. And I emailed him. And it was actually him. And he got back and he fixed it. That's awesome. I don't think I've ever had that experience with another company again, but you bet your ass when we got back in February and we needed to furnish the rest of our home, we spent another $15,000 at the bay. And we would not have done that if that thing went wrong and we had no idea who to talk to. So I do think it makes a big difference in just how good you feel about a process to be like, hey, I know who to talk to, and I know they're happy to hear from me. We had anything to add before I kind of transition into like, uh, it's just a yeah, yeah. little bit more. A couple of things. Number one, I love the name thing, the, the audio of the name. As a person that has a particularly unusual name and is very, very sensitive to other people's names, um, it's amazing when somebody knows your name, pronounce it. Can I tell you something funny? Go ahead. I use a word processor called Scrivener to write. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter why it's it's just a good word processor for large documents because mm -hmm. it helps you organize a lot of stuff but it has its own autocorrect and it has no idea how to spell your name my friend. yeah i know i know <laughs> i have and corrected your name because you appear in the book a few times because you're basically writing half of it for me <laughs> i have i have corrected your name so many times in this freaking document to the point you, your name isn't red. I know your name isn't red. But just so you know, if your name appears in the book as red, it's not my fault. Add it to the dictionary. <laughs> that, dude, that's only half of my name, first of all. My entire name is R E N C E L. Uh, try navigating that in college. Uh, it is. It, see, but, I want to see what it changes that to. Yeah, it, I don't think. Probably Russell. That's what humans no, change. It, it knows to. your name. It knows your oh, name. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah, awesome. Uh -huh. uh, but the second thing that I like is the um, oh shit, I forgot the other two things. But I like the fact I like the fact that you that that the name is pronounced correctly, and I can't I can't remember the rest of what I was going to say. That means it's it doesn't details. need to be said. It's details. It's like detail. the name that 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 specific tactic of getting an audio note from the sales team is a specific tactic. That's not what I. I mean, maybe that's useful to you, but. The details, yeah, are what and matters. It just That's shows that you. That I want you to think. It about. just shows that you give a shit, right? Like, you could think no big deal. I could say it whichever way, bumble it up. They'll be nice to me, and and mostly people would. But it's just the extra give a shitness of it uh, that makes it. Oh, and the, the other thing that I like so much is the having the direct contact to the executives who are involved in whatever you purchase. That's a big deal because it's. It's it's a it's an upfront indication that the people that actually created the thing believe in the thing, right? Um, you really have to believe in your process and what you're doing and know its quality to extend yourself in such a vulnerable way to allow people to contact you on a whim if they need to. That's ballsy, right? Yeah. Like, that's it's saying, also helpful. That's, so we that's had crazy. we had a 
we had a success coach that we had to fire, unfortunately. But it was me. The two times where I did get reached out to were people who no, it wasn't you. You just no. well, give it down. Yeah. <laughs> no, we so the so the two times where I got reached out to were students who were not happy, mm -hmm. and it was both within a really short period of time. Mm -hmm. And you know, like, I mean, I get messages of people who say nasty stuff to me on the internet sometimes like whatever that's fine but if somebody's saying if somebody is committed themselves to a service that i provide and it's a higher end service and they give me like a really well thought out like hey this isn't what i expected mm -hmm. you know it's it doesn't necessarily mean that they're right it doesn't necessarily mean that there needs to be any changes but it it absolutely means that it's worth looking at and thinking about and when two messages came in like that in a short period of time when one had never come in before mm -hmm. it was it was cause for concern and that number one that they had they had the trust and the faith even after having not a good experience in this program to actually contact me and felt like they could meant a lot yes. but also um you know i reached out to jason right away and we figured out what basically the problem was one of our success coaches unfortunately and you know we mapped back like we have um uh we we have performance indicators and the the dissatisfaction rate is like below three percent across the board with this one coach it was over 20. and so when we when we looked at those numbers Normally we look at those numbers in like a quarterly review, but we looked at them sooner and we're like, oh, this is, we got to make some changes. And so it also helps you as a business owner figure out that stuff sooner and avoid dissatisfied customers and, you know, unfortunately make hard decisions sometimes. Anyway, once, once that handoff is done, the initial four-way chat is finished, right? Like, like that, like it's designed so that they basically take it and stowed another I don't know, tunnel on the internet. How does that work? But later on, the nice thing is now you have this open four-way chat that you can use and remind people of where they started. So in this example with this woman who was introduced, like a month and a half in, it was used by their success coach to celebrate a big win. And we had like this big like celebratory party again with the owners of the company, with the salesperson who signed her up. Right. And, you know, hey, everybody, I'm so excited to share with you today that this person sold their first paid in full at their higher price point. Girl, I'm so proud of the hard work you put into building this out. Your client's truly blessed to have you as a coach. And then we also, then she responds, oh, look at y'all, just hyping a girl up. <laughs> Many thanks for your support. Definitely finding my way uh, and feeling more confident about the journey ahead. Pow. And then like an explosion emoji. And then I responded. And then a salesperson responds back. Great work. So happy for you to serve this. And then she's like, thank you. And then Jason responds. And we're all like high-fiving her. And meanwhile, you, of course, look back up like a month and a half ago at the beginning of her journey. And she's reminded of her emotions at the beginning of her journey of how nervous she was and how far she's come. And so it's just really nice because now we have this, we have this open channel that we don't use too often, but we can selectively use to like really hype up somebody and celebrate these wins. So yeah, how to start with a new client. I think it's, God, I think it's important to map this out. And I think the details, I think the devil's in the details with this. Mm -hmm. And whether, I mean, look, you might not have a salesperson. You might be doing the sales. I don't know what your sales process is like, but think about the annoying, cumbersome kind of administrative stuff that has to happen when somebody starts with you. Is there a way that you can perhaps navigate that better? Can you make it much more clear to a client when they start with you exactly how to be in touch? what's acceptable welcomes behavior and make sure that they know for any reason. Um, and then can you make sure that they always know what the next step in the journey is and what they should be doing from when they sign up, whether or not you 
have a sales team, whether it's in person, whether it's remote, I think those principles maintain. Oh, that's a period. Yeah, are we going to hear from Amber now? I want to. I want to hear some. Like, is there more stuff, or is it like Amber stuff time? Because Amber does cool stuff, and I'm not really. Uh, let me just as go good. to the bottom. Yeah, at the bottom of my page, that, that, that's like 1,200 words. I could be real fast. Can you? That's that's a, it's a I good. I mean, section. no seesaw of empathy section is only 959 words. I'm just saying. Right? I'm just saying. That's because I was finished. Uh, hey, excellence, excellence meets brevity <laughs> more than it meets uh, complexity, John. Uh, we all we all know that. Well, the people out there do now. Kind of <laughs> share that that jewel with them. But you know, Amber. Yeah, please right. some some Amber stuff like Good. whatever you got. Like just 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 make us all better. <laughs> Can you just fix us? <laughs> that is just too broad of a question, my friend. Oh, fix fix ours. Su fix our surprise delights and onboarding. Okay, let me let me phrase it a different way. Do it, it do way. it, John. Do it. If you have a friend who's one of your best friends and they're a virgin, they're about to go on a honeymoon because you live in the Bible Belt. Do you and then the your Bible other Bible. friend, <laughs> I know you do. And then and then your other friend uh, that is getting married to your one friend is also a virgin and they're nervous because they're virgins and they're going to this place oh where God. they're expected to do stuff. Uh, how would yeah. you help them navigate that? That's a metaphor. I don't actually. I was going to say that is an appropriate conversation. Oh, no. oh, well, <laughs> the other stuff. Oh, no, Starting to wish these that, headphones were earmuffs. I know that that confused me more, but I'll I'll, I'll start anyway. Good. Glad I so, <laughs> you know what's funny? So we'll often talk about like you know we all kind of do the same thing to a, to a degree, right? Like we help people work out, we help people make better food choices, blah blah blah. But what makes what we do so special is kind of what we bring to it. And this is a really like primo opportunity for you to do that. And so like for me, when, when I was still coaching, like I used all of the, the weird things about me and what I know about my clients and injected it, you know, into this section, um, you know, from everything from, um, you know, uh, like weird affirmations. Like I had the, the bracelet that they could choose their, their own affirmations, you know, for, um, and so I got that, I think through Zox and like on the inside, they're supposed to choose like their word or phrase that they were going to use through, you know, their journey with me. Um, and then they had like a list of affirmations that they, you know, could choose from, um, you know, their welcome packet was full of like inside hot mess mom jokes and all of these things that I know about them. It just reassured them that I get it. Right. I know where right. they're at. And it just, again, reaffirmed that they've made the right decision, but it gave me an opportunity to bond with them and to have a lot of fun. And it, it made, nobody can do the experience the way that I do it. So okay. if they ever look at another coach, there's literally no comparison because I've made it the way that I make it. Mm -hmm. And it just, it, it keeps me out of competing with other coaches. Um, that's awesome. I've, I've got a question. May I, may I ask Amber a question, John? Is that okay? Yeah, I'd love that. All right. Thank you. Amber, do you think that coaches are, do you think that coaches are running like the wrong race? Like when they're new to business, do you find that coaches have a tendency to want to out coach based on the kinesiology, based on the psychology, based on the nutrition information, based on being shirtless? When when the real game is like, like you just said, nobody can provide the experience of the onboarding and customer service like anybody else can. Like, it's just impossible because we're, we're all different people. Like, isn't that where you would, if you have competitive juices and you shouldn't be comparing yourself to people, but if you have those competitive juices, would you say like, that's where you want to put the energy in, in the experience? Because squats basically a squat like what what do you think about that yeah i mean i think i mean I, we can talk to almost any coach and, and most of them are going to know far more than i do about different exercises and whatever you can you know school me in that any any day of the week right um but my clients don't know that right. <laughs> you know for for where they're at they don't care right um but i do know what they do care about 
and that's what I focus on. Um, and, and booing their spirit and their motivation and supporting them through that process. Cause it's not a lack of knowledge on their part, right? Like for most people, they have the internet at literally at their hand. It's not a lack of information. It's an overwhelm of information and this like, um, yeah. So in, so I joke, you know, that I joke about being ADHD. And so there's this concept of, of a doom box, right? And so when you're overwhelmed with stuff, in your house, you put everything in the box of doom, right? And then eventually you pull it out. And I feel like most people go through that, but with information, we have so much information, we shove it in the doom box. And then we're like, I never want to touch that box. Because as soon as I open that box, my brain is going to explode. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's my job as a coach is to help them manage their doom box and just pull out a little bit at a time. So they're not like that's wanting cool. to melt down. Right. Um, and that that starts literally the moment that they, that they become a client of mine is I help them just put one step and you know one foot in front of the other. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think that knowing how to I mean obviously know how to, how to cue a squat is great, but like really beyond that, they don't need to know all of the kinesiology stuff and the the science behind it. They just don't they just don't care. I have a kinesiology degree, and I don't know all the kinesiology stuff. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> John's going right. to take that wall checkered into a session. Thank she you for listening to the podcast, everybody. Always a pleasure to have you here. Only a few <laughs> sexual jokes today. <laughs> Only a few. We'll try to do better next time. I'll come prepared If next you're time. looking for something else to listen to, I recommend uh, episode 34, which is Never Lose a Client Again. Um, it really jives the subject of this. It's, it's really customer service and, and, and client care centric. And so never lose a customer again. That's episode 34. I recommend you check that out after this one. Just scroll back in your podcast app. And as always, please uh, rate and review this podcast. I think that's a thing. People tell me that that's important for the success of the show. Uh, I don't really know how these things work. It all goes to space. It's all magical to me. <laughs> and uh, if you're still listening to this diatribe, um, which is ridiculous if that's the case, but if you are, please take a screenshot of, yourself listening to the podcast tag me on instagram at it's coach goodman so i can say what's up give you a virtual high five and uh maybe tell you whatever dad joke i'm thinking about that day that'd be fun <laughs> all right take care thanks bye-bye